Student, I hope everybody is fine. You all are taking care of your health and make sure you should take these vitamins such as A and C in your diet and do walk on your rooftop in the morning to get vitamin D. They all build up your immunity that we all need nowadays in particular. Okay, now come back from immunity to the topic of our today's discussion. <clears throat> so today we will study about uh, this topic from this chapter force and laws of motion. So this will be quite an interesting chapter going to be. So these are the some topics that we are going to do today. The definition of force in particular and the various laws of Newton's law of motion. And of course the inertia in particular these words will be dealt in detail. Then all the three laws of Newton will take these laws in the coming tutorials one by one. Then of course we will have lot many new terms such as momentum. Then we do have something called impulse and one of the most important topic in the chapter called conservation of momentum. So let's begin. <clears throat> so first of all we should know that what basically is the force because the topic is force and laws of motion. So write it down side by side also the force is basically an interaction write it down completely it is basically an interaction between the objects of which they make changes in their motion okay that means force is interaction between the objects and then they make changes in their motion and the unit of force <clears throat> we know is Newton write it down the unit of force is Newton this term will be used too much in this particular topic and then side by side we also know something because we will deal about them in detail again that what is the formula of force. So the formula of force states that force is equal to mass times acceleration okay. These two terms we have done in the last chapter. So it is equals to mass time acceleration okay. So make sure this is the formula for force that we will derive we have to derive for the time being you just know F equals to M dot A okay that is mass, mass time <coughs> acceleration. Now these are some fundamental topic that will be covered. Now this is a good thing that you should know that what happen if an unbalanced force act on an object which is already in motion. See the question what it says what happen if an unbalanced force act on a body which already is in motion. You might have seen <clears throat> that if your younger siblings is biking or is running a bike or driving a bike and you just give him a push, what happens? So you will see that as a result when you give it the force, the force of yours add on the existing force by which the bike is driven. As a result, write it down when you add or give the extra force, what happens? It changes the speed as well as it changes the <clears throat> direction. So these things are known to us and should be known to us. Now before we move into this topic, now these terms which I have told you already been in the scene. You can see inertia is coming too much for us. So make sure this term should be known to you. So you might have seen that in common day of our examples that why do we move forward in the seat when the car suddenly stops. You might have observed that when a, when a vehicle is running very fast suddenly apply the brakes you move forward. The question is why it, why it happens. And <clears throat> similarly when the car suddenly stops the inertia keeps you moving forward because cars comes to rest but due to inertia you keep on moving forward. And in order to prevent that forward motion that's why we say that always put a seat belt. We will study about this explanation in the coming com tutorial completely. Now first law that we are going to study about we do have these terms one is mass and other is inertia okay. So what is mass? So we know that mass is the amount of matter in the body or an object and more the mass more is the inertia okay. Make sure these things should be known to you the more the mass more will be the inertia there. Now as we have told you that force is the product of mass time acceleration then the question is 
Do we have some types of it? Yes, we do have some types of force. One is called balance force, other is unbalanced force. So, write it down. So, what are the balance forces? So, when an object is not moving with changing speed, okay, when the object is not moving with changing speed, that is, it is in equilibrium state. The state of the motion said to be say equilibrium. So, net force acting on it is balanced, okay. And in that case, we say the force acting on the body is balanced. The example they have given you here that you can see from the photo shot that the weight of an apple is balanced by the force exerted by the branch of the tree, okay. The weight of the apple and the branch balances the force. As a res result, the apple keeps on hanging. And what happens when the unbalanced force comes in the scene? So, when the object is not in equilibrium, okay, that is moving with changing speed, <clears throat> the speed keep on changing, then we say the force become unbalanced. The same thing when we apply the unbalanced force, the weight of the acting apple, so as a result, the apple falls down because it can't sustain or retain that state of equilibrium. Similarly, this point you should know that number one, what is force? It is a vector quantity that we have told you and they are represented by this signia, okay. This is a sign of vector you know. This is the whole line represent magnitude. This I have told you earlier in the video while the arrowhead goes for direction. So, force now also has got new word here. It is a vector quantity, okay. And <clears throat> we already have told you the two types, the balance and unbalanced force. Now, this you write it down side by side, what are the effect of force, okay? Because this question normally we do ask you in examination. So, number one, the force can move the body at rest. Number two, it can do the opposite, it can stop the moving body. Then it can change the speed of the moving body, it can change the direction of it. And of course, it can change the shape and size. So, you can see force has all these properties. So, write down one by one. It can move the body from rest. It can put the body to rest when it is moving. Then change the speed, the direction and shape and size. Now, comes for the first law that is the laws of this uh, motion in this chapter. We will de deal these laws in definition form one by one. So, first is the Newton's law also referred as law of inertia, okay. Now, it means that every body persists or retains the state of uniform motion in a straight line in the state of rest unless and until external force act on it, okay. That means a body will continue in the state of rest or in motion or uniform motion until and unless the external force act on it. Then, so why the law is law of inertia also. Then Newton's second law and third law we will take up and the uh, other tutorials. First of all, we will deal with Newton's first law of motion only. So, since <clears throat> the word inertia is coming here, then we should know what inertia is. So, it is a property of a body or a tendency of a body in motion to remain in motion or moving with uniform velocity on a body at rest continue to the remain state of rest. That I have told you, if the body is moving, it remains in state of motion, uniform motion. If it is at rest, it remains state of rest, okay. So, that property which makes that body to retain that state is called inertia. And basically, Newton's first law of motion is the concept of inertia only. Now, let us further see what the topic states. <coughs> Now, understand this concept of inertia of a body. As I have just told you, this topic should be very much clear in your mind. So, the tendency of a body to oppose the state of rest or state of motion, okay. It is a tendency or the property of the body to resist its original state. That is called inertia of body. And if no unbalanced force act on the body, then the body at rest remain at the state of rest, okay. So, if, until and unless the force act on it, if they say the, there is no unbalanced force acting on it. 
then the body remains in state of rest. So we also call it a inertia of rest. Okay. And similarly, if no unbalanced force act on a body when the body is in motion in a straight line. Okay. Again, now if the body is in motion and no unbalanced force act on it, then we call it as inertia of motion. So check it out. Some terms here. We will do deal this term in detail in particular in this topic. That is the inertia of motion. And similarly, the body to remain or continue to remain in the uniform motion in a linear direction means the direction remains the constant or same. Then we call it the inertia of direction. So that means you should know by these three terms we have inertia of rest, then inertia of motion, and inertia of direction. So these terms will be used in this particular whole <coughs> topic. Then they say the statement of Newton's law of motion. What do you mean by that? So we have just told you. It means that the body remains in the state of rest or state of uniform motion unless and until external force acts on it. Now, further, you should know this law has two parts. First part gives you the concept of inertia, that the ball, while the second part gives you define you the definition of force. That means in first part they say the body will remain in state in which it is being aligned unless and until the external force act on it. So that is two part of it. Number first part give you the explanation or the point of inertia, while the second part of the law give you the definition of force. Now, as I have just told you, we have three types of inertia in particular: inertia of rest and inertia when the body. So write it down. All the thing example for inertia of rest is vehicle at rest. Then inertia of motion. The motion is said to be that the body is said to be in motion. It refers to the property of body which is said to be in continuous state of motion. The example is the vehicle moving in a uniform straight line completely. And similarly, the last one, as I've told you, is the inertia of direction. That is the property of this body moves in the same direction, okay, unless un until the force act on it. So again, the example is the for leading forward in a vehicle during the application of the brake. So the state of motion remains. When the application of brakes takes place, the body lean forward. Now, again, in <coughs> in this case, we have lot many examples, okay, to know about it. So, this example you should do in your home also. The inertia of rest, where you can see you can place a glass, and on the glass top you just place a cardboard, and on the cardboard put a coin. And as you give a, uh, the cardboard a hit, you will see the coin falls in the glass. So, the question is why it happens. So it happens because the card is horizontally acquired some motion and due to the force applied by you, but as no force is acting on the coin in the horizontal direction, the, the respective coin finally goes down into the glass due to the inertia of rest because you apply a force to the cardboard, but the coin was still in the state of rest, so the coin falls down in the glass. <clears throat> so that activity is in your textbook also. Please check it out. Similarly, we have lot many examples as you have seen that we say the why the fruit falls when you give it a shake. So it, normally it falls when you give it a shake to the branch of the tree. So it is again the inertia of rest because the true uh, the fruits are in the uh, position of rest. And when you apply force, what happens is that the branch shake, but fruit remain in the state of rest. As a result, that create the friction as or the force by which the fruit, which has been pulled down by the gravity. You can say it. Similarly, when you dust the carpet, you know all the dust particle fall off from the carpet. Why again the same reason happens? Because as you apply the force on the carpet, the minute pores vibrate while the dirt remain at the state of rest, and hence the car the carpet get cleaned. So these are some examples that you should further look into that. Now we have one more good example that <clears throat> what happens when you fire a bullet to glass window. Firing a bullet in the glass window it create a hole in it. Why it happens? Or well, this question do we do ask you number of times? Okay, because when the glass uh, is been hit by the moving bullet, the remaining part of the glass remain in the inertia, remains in the position of rest, while the the part that has been struck by the bullet, it creates a hole in it. And this, also, you should know the size of the bullet and its shape do also have play a massive role. So if it is a glass frame like that, and this is the part where the bullet hit, 
So, that particular part has been pierced through the bullet while the rest of the part of the bullet which has been oh, rest part of the glass which will not receive that type of vibrating force or the repulsive force you can say to create a crack. So, only that part of the glass that get to the hit of the bullet only get the respective zone crack off and the bullet pierce off. But similarly, if the same glass part is being hit by a stone or the rock of a big piece, then you can see the more surface area is there, more fo force, force get dissipated here and that create more effect and of course, the glass then crack up completely. <clears throat> so, these are some of the aspects that we should be knowing it. Similarly, you know, when we the cycling or cyclist is cycling on a level road, does not come to rest immediately after stopping the paddle. Why? Because the, again, the, the force applied by it makes the cycle move a hub ahead on the road. Immediately, it won't stop it. Similarly, you can see when you strike a coin on the carrom board with a striker, the coin only moves away while the rest of the pile remains at its original position. So, these are all the statements that illustrate the inertia of rest of the particle. Now, example of inertia of direction, you know, as I have told you that we have lot many type of inertias here. So, number one was inertia of rest. Now, we have the inertia of direction. So, in this you can say that when a vehicle take a sudden turn, you must know it. The person seated inside the vehicle is pushed towards the opposite direction, you know it. So, if that you might have seen that when you are moving in a vehicle and vehicle is moving in a high speed and turn, suddenly take a turn, your body is just pushed outside the other side of the turn. The reason is why, why it happens so. So, the reason is that when the vehicle take a sharp turn, it changes the direction. Whereas, the person who is sitting in the vehicle moves in a straight line because of inertia of rest. As a result, when the vehicle take a sharp turn, you are always pushed to the opposite direction. The same thing can happen when the bus take a round turn, you are all seen because again the bus is moving and taking a sudden turn right or left. You are, so, bus take a turn but your body moves in a straight line because of inertia of rest and hence you have, you feel the outward fall whenever such type of things happen. Now, these things are again example that you should know it that mud through rotating wheel, we all have seen and experienced that that whenever you run a bicycle when we have a rainfall or there is a puddle of water on the road or the muddy water on the road. So, if you might have seen that the, the normally you get those muddy or the dirty water sprinkle on back of a shirt. Why it happens? Because the rotating wheel of the vehicle, in this case say it could be the bicycle. So, it throws the mud tangentially direction and it is due to this direction the reason that the mud guard is provided in the vehicles so that the mud should not spoil the clothing of the gentleman who is driving the respective vehicle. Similarly, you might have seen that the same direction, inertia of direction play when you put the umbrella in when the <coughs> uh, it is raining outside. So, what happened in that case again? So, in that case again, the raindrop falling vertically downward can't change the direction on its own. As a result, the umbrella protect you from getting wet. <coughs> then comes the topic of inertia of motion that will be more to be understood that we have just told you also that when the passenger running bus tends to lean forward when the bus stops suddenly you should have seen it. So, when the bus is running at the high speed and applies the brake, so you see the passenger uh, turns to fall forward. Now, again why it happens so? So, the reason is that the body of passenger is state of motion while the bus applies the brake suddenly it stops. So, in order to counter that type of reactive force, the per person or the person because of the inertia of motion lean forward ok or get forward or sometime it also fall down. <coughs> so, these are the example of inertia of motion. So, a lot of examples are there, but you have to read all of them as they all form some type of questionnaire in it ok. So, suddenly as I have told you when the fruit falls due to inertia of rest, when the branches of trees are shaken. We have just taken that example, then inertia of direction I have told you in case of umbrella. So, basically we have all the inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. They have quite a big application and they have they do form lot many question out of these 
examples okay similarly what happened if the person jump out of a moving train or a moving bus what happens so and he falls down what it happens why it falls down so when the person sitting in the train the body was in state of motion with the train but when the touches the ground then the feet touches the ground and the lower part of the body comes to rest but the upper part is still in the motion because of inertia of motion so to avoid this the person has to run to some distance in the direction if you won't want to fall off but he suddenly jumps on the ground from the moving bus or a train he will surely fall down and get himself injured now this is one good question that you should know it and i want to know the explanation also they say if a person throws a ball vertically upward make sure just imagine that the person throws a ball vertically upward in a moving train then the ball comes back to his hand now why it is so now this is a very good question and that you understand further <clears throat> because what happened is that the moment the ball was thrown the ball was in motion with the person who has thrown the ball in the train and due to the inertia of motion so when the ball remains in the air both the person and the ball are in the same distance right by same distance as a result when the ball fall it fall into the hands of the thrower so please uh, uh, get this information and try to visualize the aspect that you are moving in a bus or a train and then you are jiggling with the ball so when you throw the ball and the ball is airborne then how come it again back fall to your hand so read this again and make sure that you should know the answer completely similarly you know in the field event the athlete often take a run before he or she takes the jump the question is why he or she take a run before go for a leap so again the reason is that the athlete runs before taking a long jump why because the athlete brings himself in the state of motion so it get him uh, become easier for him to get the lift and to take the jump that he want to desire for that so these all are the examples for the inertia of motion and <clears throat> these things should be known to you further because they do form the questions that normally we do ask you in various question a okay whether it could be a passenger case or a case of a person when he throws the ball vertically up or the athlete when he takes a wide takes a run before you go for a jump or similarly when the athlete throw the javelin or a thrower or a shot putter you all know that first they take a respective body in motion and then they throw the object so all these examples themselves are big questions okay so as we have told you all these things now let us see that when a person jumps out of moving train he falls down the same thing we have read about with the case of the bus because when you are in a moving vehicle your body is also in motion but when you come on land on the ground so normally the ground is at rest as compared to train and as a result your lower part of the body try to stay, be in the mo motion while the upper part is in, is in the rest or the other way around so in order to get the things done your body has to run for a distance in order to make yourself safe on the ground now this one example is for uh, very good again so you might have seen that we have to tie luggage on the roof of the bus when we travel if the luggage is too much the question why do we have to tie the luggage now underline this answer again so when the bus is in motion when bus move with high speed the road suddenly stops or suddenly changes the direction the luggage on the top due to the inertia of motion and the direction continues to remain in the motion of same direction so as the bus take speed and either stop suddenly or take a turn so due to the inertia of motion and direction the luggage remain in that particular state and as a result if it is not been tied down they will tend to drop from the bus and the luggage will be lost similarly we should know that why drying of clothes by shaking you should know you also know this particular point that when we want to dry the clothes faster we tend to shake it better what happened when we shake it so again when we shake it the water content in the fiber fall off and when the clothes shaken in the what happened is that we put the cloth in motion but due to the inertia the water particles remain at rest so they are separated and they leave the cloth and they dry it out faster so we have already seen a person sitting in a car tries to move the car by applying force to its wall so will the car move it again a good question you see they say a person sitting in a vehicle tries to move a car 
by applying a force on its respective body of the vehicle. So, will that vehicle move? Okay, what the Newton says, they say that every material remains state of rest or state of motion as we have read about the first law. So, what is happening here? That, that <coughs> the two fold body which is within the vehicle, the vehicle and the body are at the state of rest. So, there is no external unbalanced force acting on it. As a result, when there is no external unbalanced force act, body will retain, remain or retain in the state of original state of rest. Okay? So, that was as far as Newton's first, second and third law was concerned. So, please go through all the examples again and again so that you should know because we have lot many questions coming from those part of examples. So, we should know inertia of rest, make sure inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. So, read these examples again, get it clear in your mind before you move into the topic which is now going to cover now. Now, we have approximately two terms here, one is called mass, one is inertia. So, we already have told you what is mass, the mass is the amount of matter in the body. So, it is the amount of matter in the body, well inertia is the resistance of a physical object to any change in the state of motion. Okay? So, inertia is the resistance you can call which it offers or it gives which tend to change its state of rest or state of motion. Now, this please write down the things in your copies because this is the question that we normally ask you the difference between inertia of motion and inertia of rest though we have read it, but you write it down point wise. So, first in case of the inertia of motion and then inertia of rest. So, in case of the mo motion is there, the inherent property of a body by virtue of it, it cannot change its state of motion. Okay? So, it remains in the state of motion while in second case it remains in the state of rest. Okay? Number two, in case of the inertia of motion, it is due to the inertia of motion that uh, rotating fan example eh, continue to rotate in some time even after it is switched off. You might have seen even if you switch off the fan, the fan won't immediately stop. It keep on rotating. It is again the inertia of motion. For inertia of rest, we have seen the passengers in the vehicle get a backward jerk when the vehicle suddenly stops. You might have uh, suddenly go or fruit hanging from the branch falls down when you shake it. So, sim similarly, these two examples of inertia of rest because in case of person, the vehicle take a motion, but person tend to retain the state of rest. So, it get a backward jerk when suddenly the vehicle starts. Now, these two are the again two terms that you compare it. So, again you write it down properly that difference between mass and what is weight. Okay? So, first of all you write it down about the mass concept. So, you should not forget about it. So, as far as mass is concerned, the mass of an object is the measure of the inertia. Then it is a scalar quantity which only has a magnitude and its unit is kilogram. Okay? So, mass of an object is constant and does not change from place to place and mass of no object can ever be 0, write it down. So, mass of an object can never be 0 okay? and the same case for weight basically you should know that what about the weight is. So, after writing those point of mass, now the weight is the gravitation pull of a planet. In this case, we talk about earth <coughs> towards its center with certain force and that depend upon the mass of the object. Okay? That will do, do this topic of weight also when we reach the next chapter. Then in this vector, weight is a vector quantity having magnitude as well as direction. This is a big difference. Now, here the weight, unit of weight is Newton. <coughs> so, write down these points while the weight of an object changes from place to place. So, it can be 0 because depend upon the gravity also. Okay? And the next one, inertia, the tendency of body to remain in state of rest or if moving in a straight line is called inertia and that was Newton's first law. So, everybody has some inertia or not because we always tend to remain in the state in which we are having the respective time zone. So, write down these two answers, difference between mass and weight. So, these two topics you should write completely, uh, go through the whole tutorial again, write down these examples, frame your own questions and make sure that you write them in your respective 
notes copy because the examples of this particular Newton's first law of motion has lot many applications okay. So, they do, uh, they do come in examination in number of types and number of turns. So, for the next tutorial get ready for Newton's second third law of motion and of course, the next one called momentum. So, before we proceed for those topics we run through this tutorial and write them into proper respective register and notebooks. Okay, take care. Bye.